All Pokemon are not created equal, especially when you're playing competitively. Pokemon is an RPG after all, and not every single Pokemon was intended to be powerful, especially ones that you encounter in the early game. But sometimes these Pokemon that were never intended for greatness can randomly find some weird way to be useful in competitive play. I've made various videos about weird instances like this, such as the rise of Glalie in Gen 3, a Pokemon that seems completely horrendous on the surface, but is actually quite good as an aggressive lead. I've also talked about Nidoqueen's rise in Generation 4 and the surprising success of Whiskash in Generation 5. Today I'd like to talk about three examples of bad Pokemon that unexpectedly found some place for themselves in competitive. One from Gen 3, one from Gen 4, and one from Gen 5. But first, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to prevent our collective least favorite Pokemon of all time, Iron Mugulus, from attempting to falsify his identity and gain illegal entry into the headquarters of the Horse Council. Thank you. In Generation 3, the only OU-ranked ghost-type Pokemon is Gengar. Gengar is outstanding and a staple of the format. It's fast, threatening, versatile, and has important immunities to many common mechanics. Apart from Gengar, though, there are a couple other alternative ghost-types occasionally seen in competitive play. The most noteworthy are Misdreavus and Dusclops. Since Misdreavus is just a mono ghost-type, it is not weak to Psychic, and therefore has a better matchup than Gengar against Claydol. Claydol is the most common rapid spinner in the game, so this can be quite valuable on teams that are aiming to block Rapid Spin as one of their main game plans. Dusclops is also a mono ghost type and is significantly bulkier than both Gengar and Misdreavus. With the ability Pressure and its high defenses, Dusclops occasionally sees play on stall teams. But there's one other ghost type that has had a bit of an unexpected rise recently, and I think this Pokemon is one of the most underrated choices in the metagame. Banette is a Pokemon with a lot stacked against it. This guy is extremely extremely frail, with absolutely pitiful defensive stats. Gengar and Misdreavus both have Levitate, which helps a lot by granting an immunity to Spike's damage, Round Moves, and Dugtrio's Arena Trap. Banette does not have such a luxury, but Banette does have something that these other ghosts don't a good physical attack stat of base 115. In Gen 3, Ghost-type attacks can only be physical. Because of this, Gengar rarely uses Ghost-type moves at all, since its attack is too low. Dusclops can use Ghost-type attacks, but they don't hit particularly hard. Banette is the best Ghost-type in the game at actually using its Ghost Stab. Gengar and Misdreavus can block Rapid Spin, sure, but they struggle to threaten the common Rapid Spinners very much. But if Banette hits the field against a Claydol's Rapid Spin, suddenly they're in fear of their life. Banette can deal up to 92% to a Claydol using its Shadow Ball. Against Gengar, Claydol can stay in for a bit and use Psychic. But against Banette, Claydol has to get out of there and preserve its health. And that means your spikes are staying up and you're applying a lot of pressure. Another great benefit of Banette is that it can actually directly threaten Pursuit Tyranitar. Pursuit Tyranitar is the bane of ghost types. The majority of the time, Gengar is going to get trapped and removed by Pursuit Tyranitar. But that's not true against Banette. With Hidden Power fighting and that great attack stat, they're taking up to 83% of their health from little Banette. While this can't one-hit KO Tyranitar, if they're switching in against Shadow and you have even a single spike up, which is probably likely, they're gonna drop to that hidden power fighting. The ability to immediately force out Claydol like this and also not worry about getting trapped by Pursuit is really strong. Not even Gengar can achieve this level of pressure after switching in against Rapid Spin. Bennett also has the much coveted Will-O-Wisp, which punishes just about every switch in in the game, barring fire types. And thanks to Taunt, you're going to give Skarmory and Blissey a really hard time too. Bennett is actually really hard to switch in against because of all these tools. The issue though, Though, is that Banette really can't stick around for very long. It's vulnerable to spikes damage and extremely frail defensively. Once you've revealed the Banette, the surprise value's gone, and Claydol can go for an earthquake as you come in next time, dealing significant damage. If something faster pivots in on any of your attacks or support moves, you're also in some trouble. But this can still be a great hyper-aggressive spin blocker on the right team. You may not have the longevity of Gengar or Misdreavus, but you are much more difficult to respond to in the short term than either of them are. This team by the player Colin7 is my favorite example of a Banette team. This is a very aggressive Jolteon Spikes build, and Banette fits right in. Jolteon can sometimes suffer against Claydol teams, because it relies on Spikes chip damage to enhance its offense. Claydol is immune to Spikes, and also immune to Electric. With Banette as a teammate to really punish Claydol in the early game, Jolteon has much more room to breathe. Not many players have been brave enough to bring Banette to high-level tournament games, but personally I think this Pokemon has a lot of unexplored potential 
potential as a hyper aggressive ghost type. Up next, we have a bad Pokemon that can actually work quite well on certain teams in Generation 4 competitive. In Gen 4 OU, there are two permanent weather setting abilities in the game, Sand and Hail. Sand is by far the more commonly seen weather effect because both Tyranitar and Hippodon are excellent Pokemon. A Bomber Snow, on the other hand, is a little bit harder to fit on teams. But these aren't the only weather effects you see in the format. Even though it cannot be permanently set on the field by an ability, Rain can be quite powerful in Generation 4 OU. Gen 4 introduced the new item Damp Rock to the series, which extends the amount of rain turns from 5 to 8 when Rain Dance is used. This was an amazing new tool for rain teams. And on top of that, the Swift Swim Pokemon got some new options to take advantage of too. Kingdra was already quite good in Gen 3, but in Gen 4, it's an OU ranked threat now. It has access to the extremely powerful Draco Meteor, and it can even be a physical attacker, thanks to the new physical special split. But there's another Swift Swim Pokemon, sometimes used on rain teams, that you might not expect to be as good as it is. Quillfish really doesn't look like a threat at all, and its stats are nothing special. Quillfish is officially ranked UU in Gen 4, but thanks to its access to Swift Swim and its unique move pool, Quillfish is occasionally seen on OU rain teams. While Kabutops is another Swift Swim Pokemon with a higher attack stat, sometimes Quillfish can be a scarier physical threat that is capable of generating more momentum. 95 base attack is not particularly great, but with the help of a life orb and the boost from rain, plus Swift Swim letting you outrun almost everything, Quillfish can be surprisingly threatening. Quillfish also gets access to Explosion, which is a fantastic tool to trade with an enemy and allow a completely safe entry point for another of your rain boosted threats. Since Quillfish is a poison type, it has the added benefit of being able to absorb toxic spikes, which does come up quite often in Gen 4. And Quillfish can also set spikes itself, which is nice to squeeze in some extra hazards if you need them. Destiny Bond is another way to trade with enemies that can be quite useful too. Quillfish can be a great fit that ticks a lot of boxes for the fast paced game plan of rain teams. In this high level tournament game played for Jirachi's Gen 4 Invitational, the player Tricking brought a Quillfish rain team and it was a fantastic choice. Bronzong and Uxi were used as rain setters and the Quillfish was able to dish out some serious damage against a sleeping Jirachi with its rain boosted waterfalls. It then forced in the enemy's Gyarados and just exploded to trade with it. Quillfish is really scary and it's not hard for the Pokemon to trade positively and create openings for the rest of your team to clean things up. Even in Generation 4 Ubers, amongst all the game's most powerful legendaries, Quillfish is sometimes seen on competitive teams. Up here you have Kyogre as a permanent rain setter so these Swift Swim Pokemon are a lot better overall, and Quillfish is the only one who can set spikes, explode, and give you an answer for toxic spikes all in one. And that is surprisingly valuable roll compression. Don't underestimate this weak looking puffer fish, folks, because just like a real puffer fish, he is much more dangerous than he looks. Finally, we have an interesting Pokemon choice for the Generation 5 OU metagame. In Gen 5, there was a rather significant change to the Rotom forms, and they were all granted new individual typings. Back in Gen 4, every Rotom form was just a Electric Ghost, but now they all had unique typings like Rotom Moe's Electric Grass typing, Rotom Frost, Electric Ice, etc. By far the most popular Rotom form in competitive since this change in Gen 5 has been Rotom Wash. Electric Water alongside Levitate is excellent defensive typing, and with solid stats, hard hitting special attacks, pivoting and status options, Rotom Wash can provide a lot to your team. But the second most popular Rotom form in OU might surprise you, because it is a Rotom form that was deliberately designed to be worse than all the others. Rotom's base form. This form has far lower stats than all of its counterparts. The point of this form is that it's kind of plain and underpowered. You're supposed to transform it into one of the more interesting forms. But the reason this one is the second most popular is because it's the only form that still has that electric ghost typing. Ghost is one of the best types in all of Pokemon, and it has been since the beginning. One of the most important qualities provided by ghost typing is the ability to block rapid spin. Gen 5 has a lot of the modern mechanics we're used to now, but this was still before the rework of Defog and the addition of heavy duty boots, so the only way to remove hazards from the field was still just with rapid spin. Even though it has far lower stats than the other Rotom forms, that ghost type is sometimes worth all those drawbacks. 
Ghost types are a little hard to come by in Gen 5. The most popular is Jellicent, who is really solid, but Rotom does have some advantages. Rotom is immune to ground, unlike Jellicent, which is really good in this metagame. With enemies like Landorus, Therian, Garchomp, and Excadrill running around, as well as Spike strategies being quite common, that is a pretty significant advantage to have. Gengar is another competitor, who isn't very popular in Gen 5, but it can be alright on certain teams. But base form Rotom has some nice additional resistances to Electric, Steel, and Flying, along with Electric Stab and Volt Switch for pivoting, which really helps keep up momentum in this fast-paced format. It's nice to pose a bit more of a threat to water types in a world where rain teams are very common too. Despite its pretty low stats, base form Rotom is actually quite a good fit here, with genuine value over all of the other options for spin blockers. I find it pretty interesting that the Rotom form designed not to be used is the second most popular one in a competitive format. Competitive Pokemon is a world where the strongest rise to the top. Metagames form and these top tier threats become the center of them. But this is what sometimes leads to overlooked and seemingly terrible Pokemon rising up to fill the gaps. Even the Pokemon that were never intended to be powerful can find a little place for themselves in the world of competitive play if they have some specific niche nothing else is able to fill. Who's your favorite bad Pokemon that has some sort of value in competitive? Let me know down below in the comments and thank you for watching.